On a balmy summer evening, July 31, 1952, Maurice Chenoweth, owner of the Lumberjack Tavern, stood sentinel behind the bar. A crowded room filled with the mingled sounds of music from the jukebox, conversations, and clouds of cigarette smoke created a lively atmosphere. Amid this bustle, something extraordinary occurred that would shock audiences, an event forever etched in memory, much like the iconic courtroom drama Anatomy of a Murder. That fateful night, all eyes were on a woman whose wiggling hips set off a chain reaction, leaving everyone talking. This incident would become a lasting testament to the unforgettable power of performance and its impact on unsuspecting bystanders. I've been almost all men ever since I was a kid. You, for instance, you're interested. But there is In the movie Anatomy of a Murder, the plot revolves around a shocking true story. One fateful night, a man walks into a bar, approaches the bartender named Chenoweth, and without uttering a word, shoots him six times with a German 9mm Luger. The bartender slumps to the floor, and the murderer calmly walks out, leaving the bar in a state of chaos. The man responsible for this heinous crime is Lieutenant Coleman, a Peterson. The movie delves into the details of that night, and the events that led to Chenoweth's tragic death. It explores the motives behind Peterson's actions, and the aftermath of his decision to take another person's life. Anatomy of a Murder is a classic film that takes a deep dive into the complexities of the human psyche and the legal system. It is a gripping tale that keeps audiences on the edge of their seats as they follow the story of Peterson and the consequences of his actions. The movie is a must-watch for anyone interested in courtroom dramas and true crime stories. You know something? I think you might be a little bit afraid. Afraid of what? That you might get... The movie Anatomy of a Murder directed by Otto Preminger, is a captivating portrayal of true events. The screenplay was penned by Wendell Mays and draws inspiration from a 1958 novel by Michigan Supreme Court Justice John D. Volker, who wrote under the pseudonym Robert Trevor. This classic film is set in a small Upper Peninsula town where a local bar owner, James Frederick Fred Manny, is accused of murdering a bartender named Barney Quill. The bartender had allegedly raped Manny's wife, Laura. The movie follows the ensuing courtroom drama as Manny's defense attorney, Paul Beigler, tries to prove his client's innocence. Beigler, a former prosecutor, is a small-town lawyer who is well-versed in the law, but has seen better days. He is brought back into the courtroom by Manny's wife, who seeks his help in defending her husband. Beigler takes on the case, and the audience is treated to a riveting courtroom drama as he tries to prove Manny's innocence. The movie is notable for its frank discussion of rape, and the use of legal terminology, which was unusual for the time. It also features a memorable score by Duke Ellington, which adds to the film's overall atmosphere. Anatomy of a Murder was a critical and commercial success when it was released in 1959. It was nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay. The film's success helped to establish Preminger as a leading director of his time, and it remains a classic example of the courtroom drama genre. In summary, Anatomy of a Murder is a compelling movie that explores the complexities of the legal system and the human condition. With its memorable characters, sharp dialogue, and frank discussion of sensitive topics, it remains a must-see for fans of classic cinema. And and do. Did you get me money? Huh? Money? Oh. This classic film, Anatomy of a Murder, boasts an impressive ensemble, including Jimmy Stewart, who plays a small-town lawyer named Paul Beigler. Lee Remick stars as Laura Mannion, the wife of the accused soldier, and Ben Gazzara portrays the soldier, Frederick Mannion. The talented cast also features Eve Arden as Mida Rutledge, George C. Scott as Claude Dancer, and Catherine Grant as Mary Pylant. Additionally, Brooks West plays Al Mannion, Orson Bean appears as Parnell McCarthy, and Murray Hamilton has a role as Sergeant James Durgo. The movie was primarily shot in several locations in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, lending an authentic and captivating atmosphere to the story. The quaint town of Big Bay served as one of the primary filming locations, while the bustling city of Marquette also played a significant role in the movie. The choice of these locations adds depth and authenticity to the story, allowing viewers to fully immerse themselves in the film's world. In Big Bay, the production team utilized several recognizable landmarks, including the historic Big Bay Point Lighthouse, which serves as a backdrop for some of the movie's most dramatic scenes. The lighthouse, built in 1896, stands tall, 
and prowled along the shores of Lake Superior, providing a picturesque setting for the story to unfold. Meanwhile, in Marquette, the filmmakers captured the essence of a bustling Upper Peninsula city with its unique blend of natural beauty and urban development. The use of real-life locations in Marquette, such as the Marquette County Courthouse, adds a layer of authenticity to the movie, enhancing the viewer's experience. Overall, the talented cast and carefully chosen filming locations in Anatomy of a Murder contribute to the film's enduring appeal, making it a must-watch for fans of classic cinema. It's like about 10 o'clock, huh? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. In the making of Anatomy of a Murder, the production team chose real-life locations that added authenticity to the storyline. Two notable settings include the Thunder Bay Inn in Big Bay and the Carnegie Public Library in Ishkoming, Michigan. The Thunder Bay Inn played a significant role in the film, standing just one block away from the Lumberjack Tavern, where the actual murder took place in 1952. This connection between reality and fiction allowed viewers to immerse themselves more deeply into the narrative. Some scenes were shot inside the inn, providing a unique backdrop to certain critical moments in the movie. On the other hand, the law library scenes came alive in the Carnegie Public Library in Ishkoming, Michigan. By utilizing existing libraries, the set designers could maintain a sense of realism while capturing the essence of small-town life accurately. These libraries often became gathering places for locals seeking knowledge and camaraderie, much like how they served as crucial settings in the unfolding drama of Anatomy of a Murder. By choosing these specific locations, the creators of Anatomy of a Murder paid homage to both the original events and the communities surrounding them. Don't be so bored, you know. In the 1959 courtroom drama Anatomy of a Murder, a notable scene takes place in a doorway that leads into the courthouse in Marquette. However, what viewers may not realize is that this door was actually the entrance to the men's restroom. The film is known for its realistic portrayal of the legal system, and the use of the restroom door as a prop adds to this authenticity. The door's placement in the scene is a subtle detail that helps to establish the setting and atmosphere of the movie. In addition to the use of the restroom door, the film's director, Otto Preminger, had a specific actress in mind for the role of Laura. He was impressed by Lee Remick's performance in A Face in the Crowd with Andy Griffith and wanted her for the part. Remick's portrayal of Laura in Anatomy of a Murder is a significant aspect of the film as her character is central to the plot. Her acting skills bring depth and nuance to the role, making it a memorable performance. Overall, the use of the restroom door and the casting of Lee Remick are just two examples of the many details that make Anatomy of a Murder a classic of its genre. She's been through all your albums from Dixieland to Brubeck. What do you think of her? In the initial stages of casting for Anatomy of a Murder, Lana Turner was considered for a role. However, she had one specific requirement, exclusive designer gowns. The director, Otto Preminger, did not agree to this condition, leading to Lana turning down the part. The character of Tovio, the bartender in the establishment where Parnell Hood is seen drinking, has a Finnish background. Similarly, another Finnish name, Sulio, is used for the guard at the county jail. These small details add depth to the setting of this classic movie. As the story unfolds, audiences follow the intricate web of events surrounding a murder trial. Characters like Tovio and Sulio contribute to creating a rich tapestry of personalities, each playing their own unique role in shaping the narrative. Their presence adds authenticity to the environment depicted in the film. Despite Lana Turner's absence, the movie boasts a talented cast delivering compelling performances throughout. From courtroom drama to tense interrogations, every scene keeps viewers engaged. Meanwhile, minor characters with distinct identities, such as Tovio and Sulio, subtly enhance the overall cinematic experience. In the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder, Jimmy Stewart, whose middle name happens to be Maitland, plays the role of Paul Beegler. Interestingly, Maitland is also the name of a judge in the original book by John Volker. The film is set in a small town, which is evident in the phone exchange system where Beegler dials zero to connect to the operator. The character Tovio, portrayed in the movie, is a Finnish name that means hope. Another Finnish name in the film is Sulio, which means sweet, charming, and adorable. These names add a unique touch to the movie's small-town setting and the diverse group of characters. As the movie unfolds, Beegler takes on a challenging case, defending a man accused of murder. 
The film delves into the complexities of the legal system and the intricacies of the human mind as Beagler and the prosecutor engage in a battle of wits. The movie's themes of justice, morality, and truth keep viewers engaged and questioning the character's motives and actions. The story's twists and turns keep the audience on the edge of their seats as they wait to see how the case will unfold. In the end, Anatomy of a Murder is a classic film that explores the human condition and the complexities of the legal system. With its talented cast, intriguing storyline, and thought-provoking themes, this movie is a must-watch for anyone who enjoys a good courtroom drama. I must have been only half-conscious, but I know that he tore my panties off. And... In the movie Anatomy of a Murder, there's a scene where James Stewart's character pays a visit to Catherine Grant. As he enters, we catch a glimpse of the hotel desk clerk engrossed in Leon Uris's novel, Exodus. Interestingly enough, director Otto Preminger went on to adapt this book into a film the very next year. During their conversation, Lee Remick's character feels compelled to apologize to Stewart's for having visited a rowdy bar. She expresses concern that her actions may negatively impact her husband's ongoing legal case. This moment underscores the emotional turmoil experienced by those caught up in the gears of justice, even if they're indirectly involved. It's fascinating how these small details add depth to the narrative, making the viewing experience more engaging and immersive. They also serve as subtle nods to other works of art, inviting us to explore further beyond what's presented on screen. Hello? Oh yes, it's much better now. Yes, I can hear you fine. I've waited for your call. In the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder, Ben Gazzara delivers a memorable performance as a 28-year-old character. The same age Gazzara was at the time of the film's release. His portrayal is particularly noteworthy, given that three decades later, he would take on the role of the main antagonist in Roadhouse. Throughout Anatomy of a Murder, Gazzara's character is central to the film's exploration of justice and morality. His youthful energy and intensity are on full display making for a captivating performance that holds its own against the more seasoned actors in the cast. Despite his character's flaws and questionable actions, Gazzara manages to elicit a degree of sympathy from the audience, creating a complex and nuanced portrayal that adds depth to the film as a whole. His ability to convey a range of emotions, from anger and frustration to vulnerability and fear, is a testament to his skill as an actor. Overall, Gazzara's performance in Anatomy of a Murder is a standout aspect of this classic film. His ability to bring his character to life with such authenticity and depth is a true testament to his talent as an actor, and it's no wonder that he went on to have such a successful career in the years that followed. In the 1959 courtroom drama Anatomy of a Murder, George C. Scott delivers a standout performance as Claude Dancer, further elevating the film's critical success. Interestingly, several of his male co-stars share a common background, having served in the military, with the exception of Ben Gazzara. Before becoming a renowned actor, George C. Scott chose to serve his country in the United States Marine Corps during the Korean War era. His real-life experiences may have influenced his exceptional portrayal of the tenacious prosecutor in the movie. By carefully studying the nuances of military culture and discipline, Scott brought authenticity to his character, capturing the attention of both audiences and critics alike. Among those who joined Scott in their service were James Stewart, Arthur O'Connell, and George J. Nageley. These actors seamlessly integrated their understanding of duty, honor, and loyalty into their respective roles contributing to the overall effectiveness of the storyline. Their performances resonated deeply with viewers, particularly those who had first-hand knowledge of military life. Ben Gazzara, however, took on the part of the defendant, Frederick Mannion, without any prior military experience. Nevertheless, he managed to hold his own against his seasoned counterparts, delivering a compelling performance that left a lasting impression. Despite coming from different backgrounds, these talented men formed a formidable ensemble cast that breathed life into this classic film. The rich tapestry woven by these accomplished actors continues to inspire future generations of performers and leaves behind a testament to their indelible contributions to cinema. Even today, more than six decades after its release, Anatomy of a Murder remains a fascinating study of human nature and military camaraderie, inviting us all to step into the world of a gripping legal drama. None but the lonely heart shall know my anguish. I'll 
Anatomy of a Murder made its UK premiere at the Columbia Theatre in London in October 1959. The movie, directed by Otto Preminger, was shown in its entirety, lasting 161 minutes. However, the UK division of Columbia requested Preminger to cut 20 minutes from the film. They promised that the shorter version would only be shown in small town markets. Despite this assurance, the cut version of Anatomy of a Murder was presented in London. This decision infuriated Preminger, as he had intended for the full-length film to be experienced by audiences. The unanticipated alteration in London was a significant disappointment for the director and fans of the movie. The film, Anatomy of a Murder, is a captivating drama that explores the complexities of the legal system and human nature. The story revolves around a small-town murder case and the ensuing trial, which uncovers surprising truths and emotions. The movie's exploration of these themes makes it a timeless classic that continues to resonate with audiences today. That was a kind word. The 1959 movie, Anatomy of a Murder, stirred up quite a controversy when it was adapted for television. The film's director, Otto Preminger, took legal action against Columbia Pictures and Screen Gems, claiming they had edited the movie and inserted commercials for its television broadcast. Unfortunately, Preminger's lawsuit was unsuccessful. The movie was already considered provocative due to its explicit language, which featured terms that were considered taboo at the time. Words like contraceptive, panties, penetration, and sperm were used, pushing the boundaries of what was considered acceptable for cinema audiences. This daring approach to language was shocking to many and sparked heated debates among censors and moviegoers alike. Despite the controversy, Anatomy of a Murder remains a classic film, known for its groundbreaking approach to language and its exploration of complex themes. The movie's impact can still be felt today, as filmmakers continue to push the boundaries of what is considered acceptable for audiences. No thanks. Those stinkweeds are another sign of your decadence. Jimmy Stewart's performance in Anatomy of a Murder left audiences in awe, but his father had a different opinion. He even went so far as to take out a newspaper advertisement urging people not to see it, labeling it as a dirty picture. Despite this criticism, the movie has been highly regarded by many as one of the greatest films ever made. Its realistic portrayal of a murder trial, complete with complex legal procedures and moral dilemmas, makes it a must-watch for anyone interested in historical and cinematic significance. So don't let Jimmy Stewart's father's warning deter you. Give this classic a chance and form your own opinion. Oh, oh when, when she got back uh, to the trailer, she told me what had happened. And how long was it for? Released in 1959, Anatomy of a Murder made a significant impact during its time. Audiences were captivated by its courtroom drama, which tackled mature themes and featured frank dialogue. This classic pushed boundaries and sparked conversations, leading it to receive critical acclaim and popularity. The film's influence extended beyond the silver screen. Its engaging narrative style and exploration of complex moral issues left a mark on popular culture. Many legal professionals praised its realistic portrayal of trial procedures, further solidifying its significance. Following the success of Anatomy of a Murder, various spin-offs and adaptations emerged. In 1963, a TV series adaptation titled The Defenders premiered, continuing the legacy of thoughtful storytelling centered around legal matters. Additionally, several books have analyzed the film's groundbreaking techniques and contributions to the genre. Merchandising related to the movie included soundtrack albums, allowing fans to enjoy the memorable jazz score away from the theater. Toys, clothing, and home decor items featuring quotes or imagery from the film also became available, catering to enthusiasts seeking tangible keepsakes of their favorite cinematic moments. Overall, Anatomy of a Murder resonates deeply with viewers even today due to its powerful performances and insightful handling of controversial topics. As a result, subsequent productions continue to draw inspiration from this influential masterpiece. No girdle? I don't need a girdle. Do you think I need a girdle? The casting process for the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder was a careful selection of talents. The film, known for its intense courtroom drama, required actors who could portray complex characters with conviction. James Stewart, a well-established actor, was chosen to play the lead role of Paul Beagler, a small-town lawyer. Stewart's ability to balance humor and seriousness made him an ideal fit for this intricate character. 
Lee Remick, a rising star, was cast as Laura Mannion, the accused wife. Remick's youth and charm brought a fresh perspective to the role, creating a compelling contrast to Stewart's seasoned character. Ben Gazzara, another talented actor, was selected to play the accused Frederick Mannion. Gazzara's intense and brooding presence added depth to the character, making him a compelling figure in the courtroom scenes. The chemistry between the actors was tested through read-throughs and rehearsals. The director, Otto Preminger, was known for his meticulous approach, often conducting several takes to ensure the desired performance. The audition process was rigorous, with each actor being tested for their ability to portray the complexities of their characters. For instance, Stewart had to balance Beagler's professional and personal life, while Remick had to depict a woman caught in a tumultuous situation. Preminger's casting choice resonated with the audience and critics alike. The film was a success, earning several Academy Award nominations. The cast performances were praised, with Stewart's nuanced portrayal of Beagler being a standout. In the end, the casting of Anatomy of a Murder was a testament to the power of careful selection and rigorous testing. The film's success was a reflection of the cast's ability to bring their characters to life, creating a captivating courtroom drama. Pass the song. Otto Preminger, the director of Anatomy of a Murder, was known for his unique approach to filmmaking. He was heavily influenced by Italian neorealism, which emphasized location shooting and the use of non-professional actors. This influence can be seen in Anatomy of a Murder, where much of the film was shot on location in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Preminger also had a reputation for being meticulous and demanding, often insisting on multiple takes to get a scene just right. However, he was also known for fostering a collaborative atmosphere on set. For example, he allowed his actors to contribute ideas and improvisations during rehearsals, giving the film a sense of spontaneity and realism. One notable aspect of Preminger's direction in Anatomy of a Murder is his handling of the film's controversial subject matter. The movie deals frankly with issues like rape, adultery, and murder, and Preminger approached these topics with sensitivity and nuance. He avoided sensationalism, and focused instead on creating complex, fully realized characters. Another hallmark of Preminger's style is his use of long takes and deep focus cinematography. This technique allows him to capture multiple planes of action within a single shot, creating a rich, immersive visual experience. It also requires careful planning and execution, highlighting Preminger's skill as a technician and storyteller. To bring the story to life, Preminger worked closely with his cast and crew. He assembled a talented team, including acclaimed composer Duke Ellington, who contributed an innovative jazz score, and legendary cinematographer Sam Levitt, who helped create the film's distinctive look. In terms of casting, Preminger chose actors who were capable of delivering subtle, naturalistic performances. Jimmy Stewart stars as Paul Beagler, a small-town lawyer defending a soldier accused of murder. Stewart's performance balances humor, intensity, and vulnerability, making Beagler a compelling and relatable protagonist. Lee Remick plays Laura Mannion, the victim's wife and Beagler's client, with a mix of innocence and cunning. George C. Scott delivers a chilling turn as Claude Dancer, the prosecutor determined to convict Beagler's client. Overall, Preminger's directorial vision for Anatomy of a Murder prioritizes authenticity, complexity, and collaboration by focusing on character development, exploring mature themes, and utilizing cutting-edge techniques he created a film that has resonated with audiences for decades. What did you do with the fee for the Walker's divorce? Help solve the uranium mine or something? The 1959 movie, Anatomy of a Murder, took audiences by storm with its gripping courtroom drama. The film's production was a massive undertaking involving intricate set designs, diverse locations, and innovative filming techniques. The movie was primarily shot in Marquette, Michigan, where the story is set. The production team transformed the small town into a bustling movie set, complete with a courthouse, a lawyer's office, and a soldier's bar. The team paid meticulous attention to detail, recreating the 1950s atmosphere with period-appropriate props and costumes. The film's set design was a marvel of its time. The production team built a full-scale replica of the Marquette County Courthouse, which served as the film's primary location. The set was so detailed that it even included a working elevator. The team also constructed a life-size replica of a 1950s bar, complete with authentic neon signs and vintage beer taps. Filming in these locations presented several challenges. 
The production team had to navigate the harsh Michigan winter, which often disrupted filming. They also had to work around the town's daily activities, ensuring that the filming did not interfere with the locals' routines. Despite these challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques to enhance the film's quality. They used a then-revolutionary widescreen format, which allowed them to capture more of the set in each shot. This format added depth and realism to the film, immersing audiences in the story. The film's soundtrack was another innovation. Duke Ellington composed the score, which was one of the first times a jazz musician had been commissioned to score a Hollywood film. The score added a layer of complexity and sophistication to the film, enhancing its emotional impact. In conclusion, the production of Anatomy of a Murder was a significant undertaking involving intricate set designs, diverse locations, and innovative filming techniques. The film's production team overcame numerous challenges, creating a captivating movie that resonates with audiences to this day. You know, you surprise me sometimes. The 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder is a courtroom drama that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. A key element that adds to the film's tension and emotional depth is its musical score and soundtrack. Composed by Duke Ellington, with additional music by Billy Strayhorn, the jazz-infused soundtrack perfectly complements the movie's narrative and atmosphere. Ellington and Strayhorn's music sets the stage for the story, which takes place in a small upper Michigan town. The composers drew inspiration from the film's setting and characters, creating a score that reflects the region's rural charm and the intense emotions experienced by the film's characters. In an interview, Ellington explained, We tried to make the music sound like the area, the people, and their emotions. This is evident in the score's blend of big band jazz and more introspective, moody pieces. The music captures the raw feelings of the characters, from the thrill of a new romance to the tension of a high-stakes courtroom battle. One of the most memorable tracks from the soundtrack is Anatomy of a Murder, the film's main theme. With its haunting melody and slow-burning intensity, the piece sets the tone for the entire movie. The music swells and recedes mirroring the emotional highs and lows of the characters as they navigate the complexities of the legal system. The score also features notable contributions from Ellington's orchestra, including solos by saxophonist Johnny Hodges and trumpeter Cat Anderson. These musicians bring the music to life, infusing it with a sense of energy and emotion that is palpable throughout the film. In addition to the score, the soundtrack features several popular songs from the era, including Flirtabird and Happy Go Lucky Local. These tunes add a touch of levity to the film, providing a welcome contrast to the more serious moments. Overall, the musical score and soundtrack of Anatomy of a Murder are an integral part of the film's success. The composers and musicians involved created a body of work that perfectly complements the narrative and emotional tone of the movie, enhancing the viewing experience for audiences. You've read about my husband? Muffy, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Bigler, have you read about my husband? Muffy, please. The 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder, directed by Otto Preminger, is known for its compelling courtroom drama. One of the most iconic scenes is the opening sequence, where the audience is introduced to the characters and the setting. The scene is set in a small town bar, dimly lit with a jazz band playing in the background. This creates an atmosphere of tension and anticipation. The performance of James Stewart, who plays the defense attorney Paul Beagler, is noteworthy. His portrayal of a small town lawyer with a passion for jazz is both convincing and engaging. The way he interacts with the characters in the bar, particularly the bartender and the band leader, sets the tone for the rest of the movie. The cinematography in this scene is also commendable. The use of low-key lighting and long shots creates a sense of depth and realism. The camera work is smooth and steady, following Stewart as he moves around the bar. The close-ups of his face and hands add to the emotional intensity of the scene. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It draws them into the story, making them curious about the characters and their motivations. The tension built up in this scene is carried over into the courtroom drama that follows, keeping the audience engaged and invested in the outcome of the trial. In an interview, Preminger discussed the importance of this scene. He said, The opening scene is crucial because it sets the stage for the rest of the movie. It's important to introduce the characters and the setting in a way that is both engaging and informative. Stewart also commented on his character's interaction with the jazz band. He said, The jazz music is a metaphor for the chaos and uncertainty of life. 
My character's love for jazz reflects his own struggle to find order and meaning in a complex world. In conclusion, the opening scene of Anatomy of a Murder is a masterclass in filmmaking. The direction, performance, and cinematography all come together to create a powerful and memorable scene. The impact of this scene on the audience is undeniable, setting the stage for a compelling courtroom drama. Where do I fit into this rosy picture? I'll tell you where you don't fit. The 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder made a significant impact on American culture and society. This film, starring James Stewart, explored the complexities of the legal system and the nuances of human nature. It was one of the first movies to use explicit language and tackle mature themes, which made it both controversial and intriguing to audiences. The film resonated with viewers due to its realistic portrayal of a murder trial. It didn't shy away from the complexities of the legal system, and it presented the characters as flawed, multi-dimensional individuals. This approach was a departure from the typical Hollywood portrayals of good versus evil, and it struck a chord with audiences who were looking for more nuanced storytelling. Anatomy of a Murder also had a significant impact on popular culture. Its use of explicit language and mature themes influenced future filmmakers and paved the way for more realistic and gritty storytelling. The film's soundtrack, composed by Duke Ellington, was also groundbreaking and introduced jazz music to a wider audience. Moreover, the movie contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It explored issues of gender, power, and violence, and it challenged societal norms and expectations. The film's frank discussion of these topics was unprecedented for its time, and it helped to spark important conversations about these issues. In conclusion, Anatomy of a Murder was a culturally significant movie that resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its realistic portrayal of a murder trial, nuanced storytelling, and frank discussion of mature themes made it a groundbreaking film that continues to be relevant today. An Irish lawyer who has the song. Anatomy of a Murder, released in 1959, garnered significant critical acclaim and audience appreciation. The film, directed by Otto Preminger, was praised for its boldness in addressing adult themes and presenting a realistic courtroom drama. The New York Times critic, Bosley Crowther, lauded the film, stating, it is a bold and ingenious job. This anatomy of a murder, a frank and realistic film that faces squarely the issues of justice, integrity, and prejudice. The film's unflinching portrayal of legal proceedings and mature content was a departure from the norm, making it a groundbreaking piece of cinema. The film also received accolades from the Academy Awards. James Stewart, who played the lead role of Paul Beegler, received a nomination for Best Actor. The film's screenplay, penned by Wendell Mays, was based on a novel by Robert Traver and was also nominated for an Academy Award. The American Film Institute has recognized the film's significance, including it in the esteemed FI's 100 Years 100 Thrills list. This recognition underscores the film's enduring appeal and its influence on the thriller genre. These accolades are a testament to the hard work and dedication of everyone involved in the film's production. For Otto Preminger, the nominations and recognitions further solidified his status as a visionary director. For James Stewart, the nomination added to his already impressive filmography, showcasing his versatility as an actor. The nominations for the screenplay and film as a whole highlighted the importance of thought-provoking, mature content in cinema. In conclusion, the critical reception and awards received by Anatomy of a Murder underscore its significance in the world of cinema. The film's boldness in addressing adult themes and its realistic portrayal of courtroom proceedings have left a lasting impact on the thriller genre and the film industry as a whole. Go on. Go on with what? During the filming of Anatomy of a Murder in 1959, Director Otto Preminger made bold decisions that left a lasting impact on the movie. He chose to film in the actual locations where the story took place, including the courthouse and jailhouse, which added authenticity to the production. This approach was unusual for the time, as most films were shot on studio sets. James Stewart, who played the lead role of Paul Beegler, was initially hesitant to take on the part due to the film's controversial subject matter. The movie dealt with mature themes such as rape, adultery, and murder, which were considered taboo in Hollywood at the time. However, Stewart's trust in Preminger and the compelling script ultimately convinced him to join the cast. 
The film's score, composed by Duke Ellington, was another groundbreaking aspect of the production. Ellington was an accomplished jazz musician, but this was his first time composing for a film. Preminger took a chance on Ellington, and the result was a unique and memorable score that perfectly complemented the movie's tone. The film's courtroom scenes were particularly noteworthy for their realism. Preminger insisted on filming the courtroom sequences with a single camera, capturing the action as it unfolded in real time. This approach added a sense of urgency and tension to the scenes, making the audience feel as if they were truly present in the courtroom. In addition to its innovative filmmaking techniques, Anatomy of a Murder also featured a talented cast of character actors, including George C. Scott, Lee Remick, and Arthur O'Connell. The actors brought depth and nuance to their roles, creating a compelling and believable drama that resonated with audiences. Despite its mature themes and unconventional approach, Anatomy of a Murder was a critical and commercial success. The film received seven Academy Award nominations, including for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor. Its impact on the film industry was significant, paving the way for future courtroom dramas and demonstrating the power of realism and innovation in storytelling. My partner, you must manage. Hi. I'm Paul Bigler. The 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder holds a significant place in film history. As one of the first films to tackle mature themes with such unabashed honesty, it left an indelible mark on the industry. Its director, Otto Preminger, was known for his daring approach to cinema, and this film was no exception. Anatomy of a Murder was groundbreaking in its depiction of courtroom drama, eschewing traditional Hollywood tropes for a more realistic portrayal. The film's dialogue was sharp, and witty, filled with legal jargon that lent authenticity to the proceedings. This realism was further enhanced by the decision to film on location in Michigan, adding a gritty texture often absent in studio-bound pictures. The impact of anatomy of a murder can be seen in numerous legal dramas that follow. Movies like A Few Good Men and Philadelphia owe a debt to Preminger's film, which paved the way for more complex and nuanced portrayals of legal proceedings. Moreover, the film's influence extends beyond the realm of courtroom dramas. Its innovative use of jazz music, composed by Duke Ellington, was revolutionary at the time and has since inspired countless films to experiment with non-traditional scores. Anatomy of a Murder also served as a stepping stone for several actors' careers. James Stewart, in particular, delivered one of his most memorable performances as defense attorney Paul Beagler. His nuanced portrayal demonstrated his versatility as an actor, and solidified his status as a Hollywood legend. In conclusion, Anatomy of a Murder remains a captivating film that resonates with audiences today. Its enduring legacy is evident in the many films it inspired, making it a vital part of cinema history. Here's the rose. Lily. Sweet. Did you know that the 1959 movie Anatomy of a Murder left a significant impact on the world of cinema? We'd love to hear about your personal experiences and memories related to this classic film. Perhaps you were captivated by the gripping courtroom drama, or maybe the groundbreaking jazz score by Duke Ellington resonated with you. Whatever your connection to Anatomy of a Murder, we'd love to hear your story. Did this movie inspire you to explore the world of law or music? Or did it simply leave a lasting impression with its unforgettable characters and intricate plot? We encourage you to share your thoughts, memories, and reflections on Anatomy of a Murder. Tell us how this movie impacted you personally, or how it influenced your perspective on cinema. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. We can't wait to hear from you. No, you're not. Come on, Boko.